Hey, what's shaking, homies? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make professional style hot sauce at home with just peppers and vegetables from your garden or your local grocery store. This is really easy and a lot of fun. You can make a bunch of it. You can give it to your friends, your family, and whoever, because we're gonna make a big pot of this. No matter what you decide to put in it, you're gonna need a bunch of white vinegar and you're also gonna need a big stock pot. So this is really easy. My uncle, he owns Denzel's Gourmet Foods. If you live in Canada, you've probably seen Denzel's hot sauce on the shelves. It makes all different types of really cool organic and just crazy flavor hot sauces. He also does trade shows, food festivals. He's been on the cover of uh, Chili Magazine. He won the Golden Scoville Award, or the Golden Chili for the, at the Scoville Awards, I mean. And uh, yeah, he taught me how to do this. So this is something I've been doing for years and years and years, and I just thought I'd share it with you guys. So, like I said, we got mostly habaneros. These are from my girlfriend's father's garden little bit of jalapenos we got carrots onion garlic and then pineapple for some sweetness you could count you could change any of these you could want to do a different fruit like apricots or peaches or something just change that it's gonna be the same process no matter what you decide to put in this this is lots of fun really easy and uh, let's get started with step one which is cleaning the pepper so let's adjust the camera a little bit we'll go step by step and next thing you know we'll have jars of hot sauce okay guys so to clean the peppers this is extremely easy you just Pop the cap, uh, the stems off, and throw them in. No matter what type of peppers you have, you want to make sure you take the stems off, and uh, just make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Like you see this one, I don't know what's going on there, so I'm going to cut that off, just like that, and I'm going to throw that in. So you just make sure there's nothing, you know, no nothing you don't want in your hot sauce, and you just pop the stems off, and that's really all there is to it. And uh, so I'm going to go through all these, get all the stems off, and we'll be right back. Okay, for the carrots, I'm actually going to char these on the grill. You could do the same thing under your broiler. So I'm not going to peel them because I'm just going to char the skin anyways. So I'm going to leave them skinned. I'm just going to cut off the ends here, and that's really all I have to do to prep these. Um, after I char them, I might cut them in half, but just so it's easier on the grill, I'm going to leave them like that. You don't have to do that. Uh, that's just something I, I'm going to do. I'm going to char all the vegetables. I'm not going to char the peppers. You could char the peppers, but you won't have as vibrant of a color in your sauce and I kind of want that vibrant orange if possible. So carrots are done. So yeah, next vegetable. Okay, onion. I'm basically just going to skin it. Okay, so I'm going to just skin the onion and I'm just going to cut it like this for now because I'm going to char this as well. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. This one's smaller, so I'm just going to cut this one in half, actually. Peel it. And, okay, onions prepped as well. Okay, pineapple. I'm also gonna put the pineapple on the grill just a little bit. This is all garbage. Okay, so I'm gonna cut, I'm just gonna cut it and then I'm gonna cut out the core by going on an angle here. So, see I'm gonna go, this is kinda, you gotta be careful because it, it's slippery, you don't wanna cut yourself. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut the core out like that. And then I'm also, and then I'm gonna grill this, but I'm just gonna cut it like that to grill it. I'm gonna grill these just on a high heat on the grill. I'm gonna do the same one with this slippery sucker. So, oh, oh, once again, be careful. There we go. And we'll get, rip that one out. Okay, that one I went a little deep, but that's okay. No harm, no foul. This one, I'm just gonna grill it like that, two pieces like that. Okay, so uh, lastly, we just got the garlic and everything's prepped. Okay, now the garlic, lastly, all we're gonna do here, I just give it one of those and just get them all out of their wrappers. You can use a knife. I like to just smash it and uh, and it all kind of just pulls pulls off there. So I'm just going to get all the skins off the garlic and that's it with that. So I'm not going to show you all that. I'll be back. I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a second. Okay guys, we have all of our peppers prepped. We got our fruit. 
our vegetables, our garlic. So I'm gonna get the saucepan going on my side burner on my grill. You wanna get your pan nice and hot before you add anything to it. So I'm gonna get the pot heated up and I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of oil. And first is we're gonna throw the peppers in there. So let's do that. Okay guys, so the pan is nice and hot. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of vegetable oil. And I'm gonna add all my peppers. Okay, and then I'm just gonna let these cook for a minute. I'm gonna keep moving them around. I don't wanna cook these completely down until I add in the vinegar. I just wanna get a little bit of caramelization on them. I don't wanna actually cook them really. I just wanna crisp to the outsides a little. So I'm gonna keep moving it for about two minutes on high heat and I'll be right back. Okay guys, now that I got them crisped up a little bit, I'm gonna add just my white vinegar. And you're gonna add it till you cover them, at, till you at least cover it. It's probably gonna take most of this gallon. We are gonna reduce it down quite a bit. But it takes quite a bit. See, I'm gonna end up adding pretty much this. I'm gonna add this whole gallon because I'm gonna put all the vegetables into. Okay, so it basically covers them. They're starting to float though, you can see. But uh, if they weren't floating, it would go past covering them a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this, uh, let it come to a boil, then I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Um, when it comes to a boil, I'll show you guys. Okay, while I was waiting for that to come to a boil, I got all my vegetables charred off. I did not wanna do the pineapple till later because I'm not gonna add that till later. And the garlic, I'm not gonna char off at all. I'm gonna throw that in raw. So yeah, to save some time, you could go ahead and char off your vegetables. You can do this under the broiler, or you can not do this at all, even if you want to. You don't have to do this. I just think it brings out a little sweetness in both the carrots and the onions. So, I'm just gonna cut the carrots into smaller pieces, and once that comes to a boil, we can reduce it to a simmer, and we can throw those in there too. Okay guys, there's a lot of steam coming out of the pot, so I can tell that it is coming to a boil, and I am correct. So I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer, and I'm gonna throw in my vegetables. Just gonna throw them in whole. We're gonna eventually blend everything, so you don't gotta worry about chunks or anything. Okay, now, basically, I'm gonna let that simmer till it's like at least reduced to half. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit. It's gonna take a couple hours. So now is where you just relax. If you wanna, you know, enjoy a beer or something, you, you watch a football game and have a beer, and you just come back, check on it in like an hour. But you let it simmer, and you wanna really just let it reduce, let the peppers, everything get soft, um, and then we can season it and blend it up and bottle it after. So. Now this part is kind of just a waiting game. Just be patient. You want to leave the top off, so that way, you know, I just had the top so it would, it would boil faster. You want to leave the top off so it all reduces and everything, and just uh, let it do its thing. So now's where you kind of forget about it for a bit, have a beer, and you come back. Okay, after about a half hour, the peppers will start to get much, much softer, and uh, this is good. So this is what you want. Um, you know, hopefully the vegetables are starting to get a little soft too. But it's got to go a lot longer. I have, everything's starting to get softer, but it's still about to the same height it was. And like I said, you want it to reduce about in half. So this is probably going to take at least another hour. So just be patient. And uh, yeah, when your peppers all start to, you know, get all soft, you know, that and, you know, pull apart, that's totally normal. So don't freak out. Okay, guys, I actually forgot I had these. So I'm going to add these too. Make this thing real hot. Why not? These are, oh, these still have the stems. I should probably wear gloves for this, but I'll just wash my hands really, really good. Break off the stem, throw it in. How many should I put in? How many are in here? Break off the stem, throw it in. Oh, we're just gonna put them all in. Love how I just went from putting one or two to just ask, screw it, let's just put them all in. Right, go big or go home. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to go wash my hands very thoroughly. 
And yeah, but we have Reaper peppers in there too now. Sorry, the lens is getting all fogged up. But yeah. Okay, the vinegar has reduced probably about a third, not quite a half, but getting kind of close. And I went ahead and grilled off all the pineapple, so I'm actually going to add that now. I'm going to wait to add the garlic a little bit, but I'm going to add the pineapple right now. So I actually have had it sitting off a little bit on the grill, so it's not too hot to hold. And we're just going to throw all the pineapple in there with everything else. And we're going to let that sweeten up everything and reduce in there with it. Okay, guys, so it's gotten to the point where mostly everything is starting to really turn to mush and everything's getting really soft. There's still probably about another half hour left, so now I'm gonna add the garlic. And I also got three tablespoons of sugar, three table, or sorry, three tablespoons of salt, three tablespoons of pepper, and one tablespoon of sugar. And all the garlic from a whole clove of garlic. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna let it go for another half hour uh, with this. And then we're gonna get ready to blend it, and then we just gotta simmer it a little longer before we can it, but we're almost we're almost there guys see everything's getting really really soft and uh, yeah we're almost done getting there okay guys once everything has reduced and you got it where you want it you got two options you can either use an immersion blender and uh, you know like a stick blender and blend it that way I can't find mine so I gotta do it the old-fashioned way now if you do this um, a little bit of safety do not use the top to your blender because the steam and everything it'll make it explode okay so you're just gonna we're not gonna do it you know, all, fill it all the way, just a little at a time to keep it, keep it nice and safe. Okay, so I'm just going to use a ladle to get it about uh, halfway full, I'd say. Okay, about there, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to use a rag or paper towel instead. Make sure to have uh, safety on your eyes in case this hits you in the eyes, which it shouldn't. And then I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to have to let this go for about a minute each batch and I got a separate pot right here. I'm just going to transfer it into and uh, yeah, so let me do this. I'll, I'll time lapse it and we'll be right back. Okay, crazy. I ended up breaking my blender and had to get this one out of the garage, which was okay because that blender I broke was like 20 years old. But yeah, crazy. So it's always good to have a backup in life. But anyways, I actually blend it twice. I transferred it. Uh, I went twice just to make sure I got it really good. But it's basically how I want it. So now to can or to can it or jar it or whatever, the bottle it. You need you need it to be up to temperature so it is sanitary to can you that way you won't have to refrigerate it until you open it so I got to put this back on I'm gonna let it simmer for a half hour and then we're just gonna put it in jars but it is basically done now is where you could taste it you can add a little more salt if you need to sweeten it up um, you can adjust the flavor right now um, because now it's basically you're just heating it up and bottling it okay guys once it starts steaming and it starts bubbling like that you know it's pretty much up to temperatures and we we'll give it another minute or two but we're basically ready to can it so I just got uh, a bunch of cans open. I'm definitely not going to be able to fill all these, but, you know, I just figured, be ready. So I, I took all the tops off, and, uh, yeah, so I'll give that another minute, and then we'll just can them, and that's basically it.
All right, well, hopefully I wasn't blocking the camera the whole time. But not bad. Looks like we got 10 and a half jars, 10 and a half pints out of all, all that. That is crazy. So now I just put the lids on, right, habanero on there, and we're good. So you just want to put the lids on and everything while they're still hot. And don't, you know, you don't got to put it in the fridge till you open it, but don't, you know, you shouldn't be, just don't open it, you know, until you're ready to use it. And, uh, that's really about it. Okay, guys, so I labeled them all. My handwriting's terrible, but I put habanero, pineapple, and the date. Um, once again, you don't need to refrigerate them until after you open them. This one's just going to go right into my fridge right away, so I'm not going to put the date on this one because I'm going to finish this one fairly quick, the one that's only half full. But, um, yeah, also, too, uh, we got to taste it. We haven't tried it yet. Um, I've tried it a little off camera, but I haven't tried it on camera. It is very hot, but uh, very good, so... Um, let me try it. I'm just going to try it straight up on a spoon because cause I'm crazy. Okay, guys, thank you for coming along with the whole process of me making the hot sauce and everything. So uh, let me show you on camera a little uh, taste test. So I'll put a bunch on this spoon. <coughs> yeah, it, it is hot. It's very vinegary. I mean, actually, there's a really nice consistency to it. You know, it's not chunky. It is still rustic. If you wanted to make it smoother, you would just strain it through a cheesecloth and uh, wring it out. But then you, you wouldn't get, you, you get a lot of health benefits and stuff from actually like, eating the peppers and the vegetables and everything. So, I don't know. I kind of like having them in there. But uh, it's up to you, whatever your style is. This uh, is a perfect sauce it's for like on pizza. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of pineapple on my pizza, but pineapple hot sauce on pizza is awesome. Um, this is very, very hot, like my face is getting red already and stuff, but um, at the same time, it's delicious, and um, if you're somebody that really likes heat, this would be a great sauce. You should try to make this one, um, but if this isn't up your alley. You can change up the the spice level. You can change up the vegetables, the fruits. You can, it's really, possibilities are endless. It's the same procedure no matter what you decide to use, so I don't know. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped. I hope you can make some cool hot sauces and you make a bunch or a very little amount of money and give them to your friends, your family. Even all these jars was under 10 bucks. Um, I think everything I bought was under $15 no, $15 is all I spent. And all the uh, the peppers I got given to me. So I'm definitely going to give a bunch of these to my girlfriend's dad for hooking it up with the peppers. So um, thank you guys for watching. Hope the video helped. Uh, I'm going to go get a glass of milk and I'll see you later.